In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grace is God, our loving Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together in the morning Easter service. And thank you, Lord, for that you are going to bless us with the risen presence and the word that you are going to deliver from your Son. Lord, be with us and help us to worship you with the true heart and mind and with the true soul. Accept our prayers and bless us together through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us all stand and worship the Lord by singing the opening hymn, 7-1. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. we keep standing. If you are following the prayer book, it is page one in our prayer books. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Page two, the uh, litany on page two. Worthy is the Lamb that has been slain to receive the power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Unto the Lamb be glory. Unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Unto the Lamb be glory. 
Worthy art thou, for thou wast slain, and is purchased unto God with thy blood, men of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Unto the Lamb be glory, salvation unto our God, which sitteth at the right and unto the Lamb. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord's summary of the law and the prophets. God spoke all these words uh, saying, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor your father and your mother. Lord, incline our hearts. And you shall not kill. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bear false witness. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us and write all these thy laws in our hearts. We beseech thee. Brethren, we have come together to hear God's most holy word and to receive the body and blood of the Lord. Let us therefore kneel and examine ourselves in silence seeking God's grace that we may draw near to him with repentance and faith. <clears throat> Either do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to live a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Make your humble confession to Almighty God that you may be reconciled anew to him through our Lord Jesus Christ. Together, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have sinned against thee and our neighbor. We have walked in darkness rather than in light. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. Have mercy upon us, we beseech thee. For the sake of Jesus Christ, forgive us all our sins. Cleanse us by thy Holy Spirit, quicken our consciences, and enable us to forgive others, that we may henceforth serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to him through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have eternal life. And faithful is the saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brethren and with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The collect for the day is for Easter Sunday under the theme, Resurrection, Celebrating Boundless Transformation. O God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. From the waters of death, you raise us with him 
and renew your gift of life within us. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people towards the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Kindly be seated. The scripture portions will be read to us. The first lesson is taken from 2 Samuel chapter 22, beginning from verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 22, beginning from verse 1. David's song of deliverance. And David spoke to the Lord the words of his song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies. And from the hand of Saul he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I'm saved from my enemies. For the waves of death encompassed me, encompassed, encompassed me, sorry, and the torrents of destruction assailed me. The words are shield entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, to my God I called. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry came to his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundation of the heavens trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils, and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He was seen on the wings of the wind. He made darkness around him his canopy. Thick clouds a gathering of war. Out of the brightness before him, coals of fire flamed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent forth on high, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from a strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 28. 1 Corinthians, 2nd, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 to 28. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end. When, when he delivers the kingdom of God, the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power, 
for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy is to be destroyed is death, for God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when, it's, when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expected who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son, of, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him that God may be in all may be all in all here in the reading Let us all stand up for the Gospel reading. The Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 16 from verses 1 to 11. Mark chapter 16 from verses 1. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Shalom brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from this entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they had laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from where whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him, as they moaned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive, and he had been seen by her, they would not believe it. Here ends the lesson. Praise be to God. Seated. A few announcements uh, for the coming week. Friends in Jesus Christ and precious saints of God, very warm welcome to you all in the matchless and risen name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May the resurrected power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through His Holy Spirit which is constantly available for us 24 hours of the day may He inspire us and empower us to continue to be a witness and a testimony unto His great name the good Lord bless you all oh, I happen to get a few names as I welcome you all 
for this morning service friends uh, who are visiting with us for the first time those of us who are coming back after quite some time our church members you're all very warmly welcome to this morning service and pray that the good lord will bless you but i do have a couple of names and i have dr j frank vijay from chennai and his family god bless you and very warm welcome to you all in fact uh, as he says he is uh, the grandson of mr davidson many years ago who was the organist of this church i um, welcome to you sir and your family and also our pastor the reverend e s devasakayam and his family i'm um, welcome to you pastor also god bless you all join with us uh, after the service for a cup of coffee next sunday services will be as usual morning 7:30 am and evening 6 pm both services will be with the holy communion on the fourth sunday that is next week uh, the 24th uh, the women's fellowship members have programmed uh, to visit uh, the mother of mrs selvi santosham at her residence after the sunday morning service transportation is arranged so the members the women's fellowship members and any other women of the church are requested to kindly contact uh, dr ratni alfred stephen in this regard that would be next sunday morning after the service our secretary mr marcus clare and his wife mrs diana clare as you know they are in uh, canada he and his family convey their easter greetings to all the congregation members this morning the staff of our church and of course not forgetting the pastors so we all of us join together and also wish mr marcus clare and diana clare and the members of his family at canada also a very happy easter to you mark god bless you there will be a thanksgiving service in memory of philip beverly and monica at 4:30 pm on tuesday the 19th in our church as many of you who are requested uh, can attend you are requested to kindly attend on the 19th tuesday at 4:30 pm we are also proud to announce uh, the birth uh, of a son to mr peter solomon and his wife mrs trifina solomon on the 8th of april um mr peter solomon and uh, mrs trifina solomon is the son and daughter in law of dr j j solomon and our mrs uh, prema solomon both mother and child are doing well at uh, trichy god bless them all and the name that the son has been given is uh, azel philip congratulations ma'am and i have also god bless you all last but not least i must definitely welcome uh, mrs matilda pereira and gary pereira also it's been a long time that they have been here and of course uh, their little baby son too master or rather baby jaden look is his name Welcome to you both here and your little son also and the good lord bless you all as you worship with us in the days to come. You might like to know that uh, Gary and uh, them is the son and uh, daughter-in-law and grandson of uh, a very famous Mr. Rudy Pereira and uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Pereira. God bless you all. Right, we'll wind up by reading out the birthdays and wedding anniversaries for this week from the 17th to the 23rd of this month today the 17th is the birthday of mrs jesus cynthia and mr praveen kumar 
On the 19th, Mr. P. Samuel Selvin. On the 24th, Mrs. M. Agla Venetia. On the 21st, Mrs. Elizabeth Pereira. On the 22nd, Mr. Rajvin Pradeep. On the 23rd, Mrs. Christina Anthony. 17th, wedding anniversaries. The 17th, Mrs. Danalakshmi John Deepen and Mr. John Deepen. On the 18th, Mrs. Jesse Banu Gladson and Mr. Gladson Michael Rajadare. And on the 19th, Mrs. Devakrubai Nyanavaram and the Reverend Dr. M. Nyanavaram. The good Lord bless these dear children as they celebrate their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. And may he add his very special blessings on their very special day. Let us pray for them. God bless you on your birthday and wedding anniversary. God bless you and sustain you with each new dawning day. God grant you grace and wisdom to travel life's highway. God give you strength and courage when things perplex your mind. God help you reach your cherished goal you seek and strive to find. God comfort you when distress and trouble come your way. God be with you and watch over you, we humbly ask and pray. Amen. The good Lord bless you all. Have a nice day. We shall now have a, the sermon by the Reverend Dr. Alfred Stephen. As you know, he is the Vice Principal of the TTS. God, we thank you for sending your son into this world to save us from the bondage of sin. Thank you, Lord, for raising him from the dead to give us a new life. Even as we are celebrating this new life and the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, today, we pray that you will speak to us and Enable us to understand the reason for our celebration. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, I, on behalf of uh, the pastor chairman of uh, this church and also Reverend uh, Christopher Jackson, I wish you all a happy, happy Easter. So this is our custom to say he is risen and uh, the response from the congregation will be risen indeed. We will say this you know, uh, three times. He is risen. Oh, I, I'm louder than all of you, I think. <laughs> he is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Yes, he is risen indeed. I was listening to the sermon this morning by our pastor. He was focusing on the experience, resurrection as experience. That is the crux of the total reality of resurrection. Now, if you look at uh, the history or uh, the history of um, uh, Christianity, today we do not have... Um, the direct experience of the suffering of Jesus or the resurrection of Jesus. 
we all go by the record, records that we have in the scripture. Now we read it and then we uh, celebrate it. So we don't have experience of the suffering of Jesus. We don't have the experience of the hope of the people who were living in that time either. But then we count on the scripture and we celebrate and try to make this an experience. I am reminded of um, a one uh, experience uh, in the Theological College in Bangalore, United Theological College in Bangalore. There was um, a person, uh, a student, who wrote a thesis saying or concluding that Jesus did not resurrect. That was the conclusion of his thesis. And the thesis was evaluated. The evaluator recommended that he should be given a gold medal. And it was arranged. The, there was a function where this student who said that Jesus did not resurrect was awarded with a gold medal. And at that time, the principal was uh, Dr. Russell Chandran. And he went to the uh, dais and then he started the function with a prayer. And uh, we, he went through the prayer and finally he said, in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And then again he said, I greet you all in the name of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. The function was for avoid awarding gold medal for a thesis which said, which concluded Jesus did not resurrect. But the belief of the principal or the crowd or the college student was something different. So thesis and the research can go to any level, but we have to know what we believe. Dear friends, this Easter day always reminds me of one particular story which I have already shared with you all some years back. We lived through Good Friday. We ended with the last saying of Jesus on the cross, unto your hands I commend my spirit. This takes me back to the Second World War. During the Second World War, not only the Jewish community was uh, persecuted, but also those people who were uh, uh, considered to be nomads or gypsies, and people who were underprivileged, and people who were homosexuals and LGBTQ community, they were all persecuted. And at that time, there was a, a, a family, a circus team from Poland staying and performing in Germany. So there in this circus, there is a scene where the daughter will climb up and then walk on a string on a very high, a very uh, high place. And she will walk across with no net to catch her underneath. But then the father will stand uh, walking with her across the place and then re ready to catch her anytime she slips. So this was the scene and uh, they were used to it. And one day when the father, when the family was in the house, the father said, I will go into the town and get something to eat. So the father left. He went into the town. The daughter was staying in the house alone. And suddenly there was a knock at the door. And she opens the door and there was a stranger standing there. And he said to this young girl, dear daughter, the Nazis have come into the town 
your father who had gone to the town to pick up some food is not going to return to the house. But then he asked me to convey this message to you. At 12 o'clock in the night, you go to the top of this floor, uh, this building, and go to the northwest, of, uh, northwest corner of the building and jump from there. Your father will carry you, catch you, and you both can escape. And the man disappeared. And this girl did not know whether this was a true and a, a, a real message from her father. She didn't, uh, you know, know the, who this man was. And she was very doubtful, but then the time was passing. And it became dark and it became 12 o'clock and she finally decided to do what this man said. She went up to the building. In the dark, in the darkness, she did not even know which one was the northwest of this building, northwest corner of the building. But finally she identified the northwest corner, went and uh, looked down. It's a tall building and it was dark. The Nazis were around and she quietly whispered in the darkness, Daddy, are you there? No response. And she again whispered in the darkness, Daddy, are you there? No response. But she jumped. This was the experience of Good Friday. This was the experience that Jesus, with which Jesus committed his life. He cried unto God, My for my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There was silence, no response. And finally he said, I commend my life into your hand. I commend my spirit into your hand. Was there God to carry him? Was there the father down there waiting for the daughter to jump? Yes. The father was there and he caught her and both of them escaped. And the father was there when God, when Jesus commanded his spirit on Good Friday. I commend my spirit into your hand. And father was there to take him. And today we are celebrating the Easter, the resurrection. And the theme that is given to us is resurrection, celebrating boundless transformation. Dear friends, if you look at uh, the story of resurrection, we see that there has, it has a lot of, uh, rather two implications for our spiritual life. One is that the resurrection has an implication in the fulfillment of the scripture. And God promised to David that he will raise up his seeds. And today we see the seed of David, son of David, Jesus is raised from the dead. So the scripture is fulfilled. And then also we see that God promised the Israelites that he would deliver them from the bondage uh, of, you know, Egyptian bondage. And we see that in Jesus, we are all delivered. That's what we heard in the uh, epistle portion. So we are delivered as the Israelites were delivered from the bondage of, in Egypt. We are delivered from the bondage of sin in and through the resurrection. Jesus died on the cross, saved us, and the Resurrection gives us a new life. So a total new life, a new world has begun in and through the resurrection. A new era has begun in the resurrection. And we also see another implication in 
the event of resurrection that that jesus is the lord of everything so the risen lord becomes the lord of everything and he is the lord of us today and he is the lord of the whole world and he has is the lord of life so this is these are the two implications the scripture is fulfilled in resurrection and also we, we see that lord jesus as the lord of everything and he rules over us he rules our life and he will come as a judge to judge us so this as background i was just reflecting on the theme resurrection celebrating the boundless transformation and the stories around the events around the reality or the event of uh, resurrection are many there are at least five we can straight away point out one is Ma- mary magdalene from whom the demons were cast out was commissioned to proclaim the resurrection to the disciples think of the transformation jesus is doing exactly the the opposite of what was earlier and whatever may be the situation was try was transformed to do something new which is beyond what we uh, we could think of mary magdalene was used to proclaim the resurrection to the disciples and peter who was a timid person in front of the roman authorities who denied him was met by jesus and commissioned to feed the lambs think of it he was trying to go away trying to wiggle out the scene trying to go you know and do something else and jesus in his resurrection meets him and commissions him to feed the lambs do you love me more than these feed my lamb was the command look at the you know the jump or the leap that jesus takes in transforming the persons to the other end and thirdly we also see that fearful community of the disciples locking themselves inside a room and jesus appears to them and then he says peace be unto you fearful disciples were sent out to preach the gospel as the father sent has sent me so send i you total transformation boundless transformation send come out of your fear go out of the room go into the world and proclaim the risen lord total transformation and also we see the the doubtful thomas disciple thomas was transformed and he was made to believe and finally he confesses my lord my god the total transformation and then we also see the emmaus disciples disciples who were traveling to the uh, to emmaus and he meets them and uh, converses with them and explains to them and changes their dashed hope into a hope full of life they were doubtful and they thought everything is over but then jesus told them there is life there is glory and your own scripture talks about this glory in which the son of god will the son of man will rise up so the total transformation dear friends there are so many incidences that we could see in terms of transformation the boundless transformation i would like to draw your attention to two events and then see how 
God, Jesus transformed uh, the situation or the people to the other extreme. The first one I would like to take is um, the fearful disciples. The resurrection was there not just for giving us new life, but then to continue this new life in a different way or in the other possible way, extreme. The fearful disciples were there. And there Jesus comes into the room telling them, peace be unto you. John's Gospel, we see in John's Gospel, 20th chapter, verses from 19 to 23. Peace be unto you. Was the, were the words given to the fearful disciples. Look at them. Look at what Jesus tells. When they were completely out of their hope, when they were trying to hide themselves from the Roman authorities, when they had lost all that they had counted and kept so dear to them, when they had um, uh, given up hope of doing ministry because Jesus had gone away, Jesus had been put to death, here comes Jesus pronouncing and uh, affirming, peace be unto you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. And before sending him, sending them, he, we read in this passage, he showed them the wounds. He showed them the hands and the sides where he was pierced. And there, he gives them the reality of the life that they will be facing. The Father has sent me into this world so that I will bring a new order, world order in this world. The Father sent me to establish the kingdom of God. The Father sent me to be concerned about the life of the people. The Father sent me into this world to save the sinners. The Father sent me into this world to set things right, set the relationship right among the people. And the Father sent me so that you all of you will have life and in life in abundance. But what happened to me? They crucified. They crucified me. They killed me. When I was in my father's business, they killed me. Look at my wounds. Look at my side. There are scars, not scars, the, the wound is there. And I am sending you into the world as the Father has sent me. Go into the world, establish God's kingdom, preach, teach, baptize, and also set things right in the society. And do all that God wanted me to do in this world. I tell you, peace be unto you. I am sending you as the Father sent me into this world. Beware, they will crucify you. They will crucify you. That is why Jesus showed them his hands and the sides. Jesus did not resurrect, as I always think of uh, the scene of resurrection. Jesus did not resurrect just as a, a molded or as a blameless or scarless, woundless body. He resurrected along with the wounds. Along with Jesus, the wounds that the world caused also resurrected. So we look at the resurrected wounds in Jesus Christ, not just Jesus. He resurrected with the wounds signifying that you and I start a new, completely new life, live a new life in which we received in and through the resurrection, we will be crucified. That is the significance of resurrection. 
That is the total transformation that we will be experiencing. We will not be without scars. Resurrection tells us that Jesus is sending us, has sent us into the world as the Father had sent him into this world. Not to live a jolly good life, but to be willing, but willing to be crucified. But willing to be bear the wounds that the world will cause on us. Willing to face the challenges. Willing to face the ridicule. Willing to face the oppressive uh, powers. Willing to face all that will harm us. Because in and through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, completely a new world has begun. What is that new world? A new world in which you and I will proclaim the new life that we have received in Jesus Christ. And in this new life, there will be opposition. But God in Jesus Christ gives us the assurance today. Peace be unto you. A peace is given to you. You will be guarded. You will be protected. You will be uh, supported with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Go and preach. Go and live. Go and proclaim this new life. Dear friends, the fearful disciples were transformed boundlessly to proclaim this resurrected Jesus. And today, we as church, celebrating this Easter day, celebrating the resurrection, are challenged to go out and proclaim this new life. Proclaim this kingdom of God. Proclaim this peace that God in Christ wanted to establish in this world. Are we fearful? Allow God or Jesus to transform us to be a fearful, fearless community proclaiming the new life. Secondly, and finally, the other incident that I would like to draw your attention to is in the Luke's Gospel, 29th chapter, 24th uh, chapter 24th verse onwards, where we read about uh, the Emmaus disciples. Hope you would have understood I left my specs there, <laughs> back in the altar. Yeah, um, Emmaus narrative, uh, where the disciples, the companions, were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, where they are confronted with uh, a stranger, the stranger who, were, uh, who was uh, walking along with them, taking part in their conversation and uh, listening to all that they were telling. And he, the, he was asking them, what are you talking about? And the, Emmaus people, the disciples from Emmaus were telling, no, we had a person called Jesus. And he was considered to be the Messiah. And we thought he would be the king of uh, the Jews and the Messiah of the world. And we followed him. He did everything that was good. And he taught us good things. And they went on and on. Finally, they said, these people, the Romans, they have crucified him. They have killed him. And we have nothing now. All that we had in our, as our hope, is gone. All that we counted would take place or thought to take place is gone with the death of our Lord, uh, of Jesus. And the Messiah, we whom we thought would save the world, is gone. He is no more there. And we followed him all these days, and we do not know where to go now. This was a dashed hope of these disciples who were traveling to Emmaus. 
dear friends this is a situation in which people who faced the first good friday had this was the experience of all those who witnessed the crucifixion of jesus had and this was a reality of that time they followed him, uh, followed jesus they thought he is going to do everything and he is the messiah but nothing happened at that time all that they had in their mind or all that they re uh, realized and experienced was just death of jesus and the reality was the dashed hope shattered dreams completely shattered and this jesus was listening to the story of these disciples and then he is trying to retell the story and this jesus was telling yes it is true messiah had to come and he was a, a, a jesus, son of man had to come and he had to do all the good things and he had to do all the miracles and he had to establish god's kingdom everything that had to happen but then don't you know that this in your scripture it is written that this messiah has to be killed suffer death and rise again in glory is it not written in your scripture look at the ending of the story that jesus narrated and think of the ending of the story that the disciples narrated the disciples ended with the dashed hope jesus ended with a hope a life glory dear friends we have this experience in our life when we go through troubles when we have problems in our lives when things do not take place in the way that we think of when we face failures when we face disappointments when we face complete you know shattered situation in our life we think that is the end of life but let me tell you the resurrection the experience of the risen lord the resurrection itself takes us to the other side of the reality where jesus transforms the to total situation and re-narrates our story re-narrates our life and ends with the note of hope that is the point of resurrection that is the reality that we see in the resurrection the resurrection story with the emmaus disciples is there a situation that is bothering is there particular thing that is putting you to a dead end do you think that you are facing a wall in front of you do you think that everything is gone the resurrection tells us today and gives us a different ending where the horizon of hope is opened before us the horizon of god's presence is opened before us the horizon of god's walking with us is opened before us that is the boundless transformation in our life resurrection transforms our life be it our failure be it our disappointments be it our ill health but there is a resurrection that takes us to the boundless or open horizon so when there is difficulties look up to god daddy god are you there are you there there will be silence but 
as that daughter threw herself in the darkness not knowing whether god is there or not throw yourself ask god are you there don't wait for the answer throw yourself and he will be there definitely to carry you not allowing your foot to stumble hit against a rock or a stone but he will carry you that is the truth of resurrection may god bless us as we celebrate this great reality the truth of resurrection in our life and enjoy the new life amen we would like to acknowledge the efforts of a few persons who have decorated this altar in a very most beautiful way the good lord bless them and uh, bless their talents also having heard the word of god let us arise and affirm our faith in the words of the nicene creed nicene creed <coughs> I believe in one God the Father almighty maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten son of God begotten of his father before all worlds God of God light of light very God of very God begotten not made being a one substance with the father by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the holy spirit of the virgin mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under pontius pilate he suffered died and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end and i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who with the father and the son is worshiped and glorified who spake by the prophets and i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and i look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come amen let us pray let us pray we will follow the words of the fourth litany <clears throat> and after each bidding your response will be lord in your mercy hear our prayer the fourth litany and your response will be lord in your mercy hear our prayer for peace and justice in the whole world and for the fullness of life in christ for all men lord, lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for our country its president ministers and those who serve in its government lord, lord in, in your mercy, mercy hear our prayer for all those who work in fields and factories in workshop and mines and all who labor with their hands to provide for our needs lord, lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear our, our prayer for teachers and students scientists artists and craftsmen and those engaged in the work of healing Lord, Lord in your, in your mercy, mercy hear our prayer for those who are suffering the poor the hungry the destitute and oppressed the sick and the dying Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear our prayer for the unity of all God's people and for their work and witness in the world Lord, Lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear our, our prayer. prayer for bishops and all other ministers especially our moderator and our bishop that they may faith be faithful in their ministry lord, lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer for ourselves that we may make known the goodness and power of him who called us out of darkness into his light lord, lord in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear our, our prayer. prayer 
that with all his people who have faithfully served him here and have died, we may also come to eternal joy in his presence. Lord, Lord in, in your mercy, mercy hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before thee for all estates of people in thy holy church, that every member of the same in his or her vocation may truly and godly serve thee through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continue to worship God uh, in breaking the bread on this special day, celebrating the resurrection. Behold, how good and joyful a thing it is, brothers and sisters, to dwell together in unity. We who are many are one bread, one body, for we all partake of the one bread. I will offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will seek and speak unto the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share the sign of peace with our neighbors. As we remain standing, let us sing uh, hymn number 68 during which the offer tree will be collected. Kim number 68.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for Mr. Naveen. We celebrated his birthday a couple of days ago, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, and we pray that your blessings will be upon him in a very special and specific way, Lord. Take care of him, Lord, and bless him in the days to come. And whatever he does or says, may he bring glory and honor to your great and wonderful name. We pray for his parents, Lord, Mr. Daniels and Mrs. Geetha. Take care of them also, Lord, and give them the necessary good health and strength also, Lord, so that together as a family, they will bring glory to your great name, Lord. Lord, we also want to pray for Mrs. Prema Solomon as she comes to give thanks with a grateful heart, Lord, for the gift of a baby boy for her son, Peter, and his wife, Trifina, Lord God. We thank you for both of them and we pray your blessings upon both of them, Lord, Peter and Trifina, and pray that you will take care of them. And the little baby boy, Philip, and the little girl also, Phoebe, Lord God. Bless them also in the days to come, Lord, as we pray for the other children also. Andrew and Jumila and uh, their children also, Lord God. Jaden and Abigail, bless them too, dear Lord, we pray, as well as for Chris and Diana too. Not forgetting ma'am and uh, Dr. J.J. Solomon. As a whole family, Lord God, we pray that you would bless them in the days to come. To continue to be a witness and a testimony to thy great name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Holy Father, who through the blood of thy dear Son has consecrated for us a new and living way to thy throne of grace, we come to thee through him unworthy as we are, and we humbly beseech thee to accept us and use us, and these, thine own gift of thy glory. All that is in heaven and earth is thine, and of thine own do we give to thee. Amen. Let us say together the prayer for the presence of our Lord. Be present, be present, O Jesus, thou good high priest, as thou art in the midst of thy disciples, and make thyself known to us in the breaking of the bread. Who live us and reign us with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without the end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is verily meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. But chiefly we are bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his death has destroyed death and by his resurrection has restored life to us. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, be Lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed be he that hath come, and is to come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Truly holy, truly blessed art thou, O Heavenly Father who of thy tender love towards mankind did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until he is coming again, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, 
For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Thy death, O Lord, we commemorate. Thy resurrection we confess, and thy second coming we await. Glory be to thee, O Christ. Wherefore, O Father, having in remembrance of the precious death and passion and glorious resurrection and ascension of thy Son, our Lord, we thy servants do this in remembrance of him, as he hath commanded until his coming again, giving thanks to thee for the perfect redemption which thou hast wrought for us in him. We give thanks to thee, we praise thee, we glorify thee, O Lord our God. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to sanctify with thy Holy Spirit us, and these thine own gift of bread and wine, that the bread which we break may be the communion of the body of Christ, and the cup which we bless the communion of the blood of Christ. Grant that, being joined together in him, we may all attain to the unity of the faith, and may grow up in all things unto him, who is the head, even Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us take this time to examine ourselves. God has forgiven us of all our sins. And in the resurrection, God has brought us into a new life. Are we continuing in this new life? As we come to this table of the Lord, let us examine ourselves and make us worthy by committing our life to Him. Let us say together the prayer. We do not presume to come to this to thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not the communion in the body of Christ?
the things of God or the, for the people of God. Draw near to the table of the Lord with confidence and receive the blessing of the Lord. Thank you.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for you. Preserve your body and soul for the eternal life. The blood of the Lord shed for you. Preserve your body and soul for the eternal life. Having now by faith received the sacraments of the body and blood of Christ, let us give thanks. We will say the first prayer which is found in page number 17. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has accepted us as thy children in thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and has fed us with the spiritual food of his most precious body and blood, giving us the forgiveness of sins and the promise of everlasting life, we thank and praise Thee for these inestimable benefits, and we offer and present unto Thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service. Grant us grace not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, that we may learn what is Thy good and perfect will, and so obey Thee here on earth, that we may at last rejoice with all Thy saints, in the heavenly kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. The blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. As we depart, go with the blessing of God the blessing of the Easter, blessing with the family. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds. The knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. The service by singing the final hymn, one double four, all hail the power of Jesus Christ. One, two, and five and six stanzas. One, two, and five and six. Thank you.
the Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.